Hello to all you guys out there in YouTube land. Yes, it's me, DR. And have you heard? 180, 100, 180 is the magic number. What's all that about? Cue the intro. looked into running in any great shapes you've gone online you've done the google research that most people do you would must have come across 180 being a magic number 180 referring to the number of steps that you take per minute this is also referred to as your cadence you have a cadence of 180 180 s p m steps per minute so cadence so what is the standard definition of cadence as i said in running cadence is often defined as the number of steps you take per minute is it's an easy measurement for people to take you can count the number of steps that you take per minute what most people do is they count the number of steps on one foot per minute and times that by two so if you have a right foot cadence of 90 steps per minute then you've got a two foot cadence of 180 steps per minute. So with this in mind, you've probably heard that 180 steps per minute is the magic number of steps per minute, the steps per minute you should be aiming for when you're running. So due to the prevalence of this, this, this theory that's around, I thought I would add my thoughts into the mix. Again, this is only my opinion. This is an opinion. So take it as such. It's not gospel. There's no peer reviewed studies behind this. This is just my opinion. Where does 180 steps come from? Well, I first came across this theory from a book I read by Jack Daniels, the great running coach. This theory is in Jack Daniels running formula book. Uh, I've got the third edition that came out in 2013. I think it's in all editions and this is where Jack Daniels talks about his theory of running cadence and talks about 180 steps per minute. Daniels' initial observation, based on watching distance runners in the 1984 Olympics, I believe, was that when he watched the racing elite, they all had a cadence of at least 180 steps per minute. And that, therefore, was an ideal running cadence for people. But this is where I think it's got lost in translation. The key words that he used were at least 180 steps per minute. Daniels never said you needed to maintain a stride rate of exactly 180 steps per minute. But over the years, this 180 mantra has turned into some kind of church of running cadence where it's constantly preached that you need to have a cadence of 180 steps per minute or you are totally an inefficient runner and you're not efficient and you're not doing what you should be doing. You're not a runner unless you have this 180 steps per minute thing going on. In the 2012 article on Runner's World by Scott Douglas, he highlighted that in the 2012 Olympic trials, the men's 5K winner, Galen Rupp, was taking 187 steps per minute, while the runner-up, Bernard Legat, and apologies for butchering people's names, was, right at, was at a running cadence of 197 steps per minute. His summary, was that the, the, the conclusion for all of this is there no magic number of cadence. There's no magic number of steps per minute. There is a general consensus that most, coast, most coaches would agree on that if you're under 160 steps per minute, that there's the potential that you're overstriding. And this is because the least number of steps per minute means that you're spending more time on your feet, which means you're spending more time on the ground. And therefore, the propensity is that you're actually overstriding to, to create that time on the ground. So you're overreaching, landing on the ground too early and therefore spending a lot of time on the ground. And that's the, the impact of going at, at, at under 160. As I said, there's no magic number, but if you're doing 160 steps per minute, or less, then there's a propensity that you might be overstriding and spending too much time on the ground. And in this case, it might be more efficient for you to increase your steps to 170 to avoid the overstriding and spending the right amount of time on the ground. Personally, I agree with this assessment. I think most recreational runners aiming for a 180 step per minute when you're running a you know, 12 minute mile, 11 minute mile might be quite difficult and what it's going to lead you to do is to shuffle we've seen a lot of people now do that shuffle where they're trying to get this turnover you know they've read a few books and they've read that 180 is the magic number 
and they're trying to get turnover and really and truthfully they're focused so much on turnover that actually they're wasting a lot of energy with that turnover they focus all this on turnover and they're not even they're not even contemplating the fact that actually that turnover might be leading to other problems i also think that without a holistic approach to what's going on in your body aiming for this 180 mark is something that can lead you to additional issues it's all about all different as runners so it's about finding the the foot stride and stride rate that's really efficient for you i would say generally a higher cadence is useful but find the cadence that's useful for you. Another third danger is that people go from nothing to try and get to 180. And that is something that is really hard for the human body to do. And there's lots of things that are wrapped up in increasing your cadence. So they're trying not to do a gradual increase, they're trying to do an instant increase. And that can lead to real big problems where, or causing issues in other parts of their stride. So I'm really conscious that Increasing stride rate is good, and I would never say it's bad. Increasing stride rate and, 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 and cadence is really important for running. We want to be lighter on the feet, and we do want to have a rolling motion as we go across the ground. But what we don't want to do is try and go from 0 to 60, or from a 160 to a 180, because that will start creating issues for people. And I've seen that in runners, anecdotally, that they aim for this 180, and then they don't achieve it, and then it all goes out the window. And now some of them have become heavier strikers. So they've actually gone from a 160 rate to 150 rate because they're just so fed up with aiming for it. And they've become heavier strikers and that compounds with heavier hitting of the ground. So they're hitting the ground heavier, uh, more forces going through the body, more shock going through the body, and that later then relates in an injury. So I am definitely an exponent of higher cadence. My cadence at the moment is a 175, I think. Uh, I'm not an uh, elite runner, so that's that's good for me it's keeping me nice and light but there's sudden elements where I'm doing a recovery run at my speed and so my cadence naturally has to slow down because I'm not going at some of the speeds that some people are doing if I was doing an 8 30 minute mile maybe that would be something that I could maintain but if I'm doing a 12 minute mile then 180 is it's just it's just not feasible in terms of the speed you're going you end up becoming a shuffle runner you end up running like that uh, and to be honest that's not good for anybody because that's not that you're not necessarily maintaining good form it's too quick at a slower speed for you to maintain good form and keep things keep things focused especially when you think about all the other components of running i'm also thinking about doing a part two depending how popular this video is on about how you would increase cadence and some of the benefits of cadence and all those type of lovely things so i'm thinking about doing that as well so if this video is really popular I'll do that. If not, I'll just leave this and post this up. I'm quite happy to do short light bites and they can all become like a bit of a series of videos that all link together. What's your experience of Cadence? Have you heard about the 180 myth? Have you tried it? Does it work for you? I'm really keen to find that out as well because I think on this channel we're going to have a full range of people, a range of abilities from great runners who can run a, you know, a 2.30 marathon, in, in that regard, which I would consider elite in my world, I know some people it's like more like 212 is elite, but for people in that, that regard who can do that type of speed, to some people who might have never done a marathon. So I'm keen to find out your experiences with a cadence, what's worked for you, have you tried it, would you try it, would you want to try it? what would you need to be able to try it what kind of guidance would you need i'm happy to help out as much as i can but that all, it all depends on your engagement your interaction and your your feedback to the channel so pop the comments and doobie doo bar apologies for the background noise filled a few videos in a row so there's going to be the background noise apologies for that anyway this is dr saying peace out have a safe journey wherever you're heading